It's so simple, it's difficult. Don't get like I was. I had SOS, stuck on stupid. <laughs> now I got the other SOS, save our souls. So I was, uh, went through the, the system. I was from white pants. I used to fight. And uh, the Lord was protecting me then, you know. And I just happened to beat up guys that wanted to fight with me. And, uh, you know, when I got out, I used to go to the gym and train with Ernie Lopez. He was my stable mate. But then I would get busted. I'd start using heroin. And I never stood out more than 90 days. One time I stood out eight months in 69, 70. But in and out of jail, I became a member from the Mexican Mafia, shot caller, telling people what to do and how to do it. Like I said, I am proud of my life. One thing I'll tell you, I'm proud to be a Christian. Yeah. Anybody could act a fool. It don't take no brains. But it takes a very strong woman or man to serve the Lord. Yeah. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, serve the Lord. Because the way I grew up, you know, knowing doing wrong. And I used to get away with it. Till I done 40, started doing time, and I ended up doing 40 years of prison. And the uh, last stretch was 21 years and 20 in the shoe unit. They didn't, wouldn't let me out because I caught a murder brief in there. That's a miracle. I shouldn't be standing here. Uh, through writs and appeals and the grace of God and prayer, I got out. So, you know, I, I done a 21 on that and 20 in the hole. And uh, like I said, I'm not proud of it. Mexican mafia, people ask me, aren't you scared? Blood in, blood out the Mexican mafia. And I tell them, you know, no, I'm not scared. It's how you get out through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm yeah. And uh, that's two miracles. I shouldn't be. A, I shouldn't be standing here. I should be in prison still. The other miracle is blood in, blood out. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm out of the Mexican mafia, and I serve a mighty God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. You know, I go anywhere. You know, I'm not looking over my back if somebody's going to hit me. You know, one thing is for sure. You can't live forever. Come on. Yeah. So I know where I'm going. Yeah. And, and but they got respect. They respect me and uh in all reality I prayed for some of them. Uh one of them came over to my house one time and says, We like what you're doing. And I told him, You could do the same thing and he said, No, the money, the drugs. Uh, the woman, and here I just bought a house on minimum wage. A uh, minimum wage. And I told him, look, the Lord will provide. I bought this house on minimum wage. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, the Lord provides, you know. And I, I always try to figure out, how did I get that house on minimum wage? I was the only one that made the bid between, between all the companies. Real estate. I was, I was the only one who made the bid. You know, God works in mysterious ways, you know. And uh, I was the only one who made the bid and I got the house. And, uh, you know, another miracle. And, you know, when I got out, I couldn't get a job. I walked for a whole year and uh, to the bus station. All I had to do was make a phone call. I could get money, drugs, a car. If I made a certain phone call, one day I was going to do it. I was going to give up. And I said, I'm going to make this phone call. What's wrong with me walking for a whole year and can't get a job? So about that time, I crossed the street. I made up my mind one more block to go on Foothill. I was living in San Bernardino. And I want to make that phone call. And a car passed by. Then it 
came back, turned around, and uh, stopped. And I, I didn't know who it was. Maybe somebody I'd done wrong to in the joint hurt, or I didn't know who it was. I had my glasses, so I stuck my head in the car to see who it was. Worst thing I could have done, <laughs> stick my head in the car. Would have got, could have got blown away. But he said he was, he told me who he was. He was a pastor. He met me. And he said, I'll give you a ride where you want to go. There's no way he could leave L.A. and San Bernardino. We could have, and meet, it was, there was no way I could have, he could have crossed my path when I was going to make that phone call. And uh, to this day, he calls, he said divine, that was divine appointment. No, I told him that was a spiritual drive-by. <laughs> He gave me a ride and he told me, that's the devil putting uh, things in your mind, you know. So I remained faithful and I started getting blessed. I got a house, ended up with my own company, a semi. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess you're wondering, did I get saved in prison? No, uh-uh. That's a pretty thing from my mind. I, I used to condemn people in prison for carrying the Bible. I thought they were weak, but in all reality, they were the strong people. Because by them carrying the Bible, they were making a decoration of what they were. Christians, you know. And I used to think they were weak. And man, that's a, it's hard to be a Christian, you know. Anybody could act a fool. But let me tell you, God takes the foolish things a world to come upon the wise. The weak things are what to change the strong. God will use the fool as a tool. He'll use the weak and the timid to the limit. If you serve him. You know. So the other I got saved in San Bernardino a month after I was out from a little old lady in a dead end street. I I thought she was came for the rent. My son in law told me there's my wife's aunt, you know, and uh, I thought she came for the rent. I fixed it all and drank it all, and I was going to break and run and hide from a little old lady. <laughs> and I never ran from nothing, and here I am going to run from a little old lady. <laughs> so the car would stop. It would... The husband didn't want to meet me because he heard a lot of bad stuff about me, but she made him. You know, some woman, man, they make their men. <laughs> but she made them, and she got out of that car. She jumped out, man, and she came right to me. And I looked at her. I thought she was loaded on something. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I thought. So I said, man, I want to stay here and scheme, get her medication. <laughs> but she was high on the most high. She was a Christian, you know, and she came right to me and told me, started talking to me. She said who she was, and out of the clear blue sky, she said, would you like to see Lord Jesus Christ in your life? And like most of us, I said, I'm not ready. The time's not right. And I heard somebody say, you've been saying that for 40 years. The next 40 years, you'll be 100 years old. So I told her, all right, but I'm still trying to scheme on her medication, you know. <laughs> you know how some Christians gleam. They just radiate love, joy, and happiness, you know. They got that spark in their eye. This lady had it all. I thought she had some, some kind of narcotic, you know. <laughs> but uh, she was full of the Holy Ghost. She led me to the Lord, and every, twice a week she picked me up and take me to church. <laughs> That 21 years ago, you know, and I've been serving the Lord for 21 years. And where I spent all the seven, 60s and San Quentin, 70s and 80s in Folsom and part of the 90s in Pelican Bay, when I spent all those years serving myself, serving time, serving the devil, now I serve the Lord and I go right in and come out the same day. Yeah. And, uh, I've been in those prisons where I've done time, 
some of those guys see me and, man, what are you doing here in free clothes? I said, I'm serving the Lord, man. Oh, you changed. And I said, no, uh uh-uh. I'm the same guy. I just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ now. And they, they, they wish they could do what I'm doing. But they're doing lives, most of them. And some of them, believe it or not, when I go in those prisons to those chapels, some of them that are truly genuine serving the Lord, they don't got, they seem like they're free. I see people out here sometimes more bound than them. And if they remain faithful, you know, and uh, they're serving the Lord and they're in, man, sometimes it amazes me, you know, and I said, man, all that time I'd done serving the devil, and I was really had it so I stuck on stupid. Now I go into joints, I've been into uh, San Quentin twice, I've been into Corcoran twice, I've been into Chino twice, I've been into the county jails, I've been into Corcoran twice. Calpat I go whenever I get a, supposed to go in once a month. I've been in the Texas joint. So, you know, where the state of California had me handcuffed, chained down, taking me from one shoe unit to another shoe unit. The Lord has me flying from one state to another state. 